All right, yeah. Great. The basement sucks. What's all this shit? Hey, there's Katie boxes down here. I don't like this. All right, let's start over here and work our way around. <sighs> Read note. Dear Samantha, I would like to cordially thank you for having me to your abode for the Thanksgiving holiday with your lovely family. I enjoyed the flavorful potatoes, and also it was weird being around your parents for that long, but it was pretty funny how impossible it is for your dad not to be awkward for more than 30 seconds at a time. Very cordially yours, your close friend and confidant, Lonnie D. Quite. Dear Miss DeSoto, Allow me to take this opportunity to thank you in kind for being such a gracious host of the festivities at your father's estate, following the aforementioned meal with my parents. Your family's Thanksgiving feast was the more enjoyable of the two events, I must say. Well, I especially appreciated the time I spent with your grandmother, who is a lovely woman with sterling taste and a refined air. Let's do it all again, at the same time next year, shall we? Indeed, Madam Samantha Greenbrier Esquire. Hmm, interesting. So, we're already at Thanksgiving. Hmm. Soda! It's here again! Damn it. Okay. Chips. Potato chip. Damn it. Potato chips. Judy's original potato chips. Are they really? Judy? I've never heard of you. Aw, Samantha and Lonnie. Ho ho ho! One is a bird, and one is a rat. All right. It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know. So you could say we're dating. But it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone, or go home for the night, where it's just quiet and we're alone. We say I love you. Hmm. Well, you guys sure are falling hard for each other, aren't you? Let's pull it. First place! For what? The science fair? Caitlin Greenbrier. Okay. Oh man, one of my old sex ed assignments. Oh my god. This is from 1991. Oh, this is from the- this is the same worksheet! Oh, Caitlin. You did not do the same thing as your sister Samantha. You're a troublemaker, sister. Hmm, that's interesting. A plaque. K is for kind. A is for amazing. I is for intelligent. T is for talented. L is for lighthearted. I is for important. And it's for nice. Nice might be the most generic compliment you can give someone. Oh, it was this. It was the string. I moved through it and I saw it out of the corner of my eye and I was like, what is that? Okay. That was a furnace down here? Seriously? I guess, I guess they do live in Oregon where it gets cold. I live in Texas, so we don't have basements here. We don't have furnaces. Which, it's weird that we don't have basements in Texas, because we have tornadoes all over the place. But, uh, nope, we don't have that type of stuff. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this is typical of northern households either, I'm just saying. Reed College of Admissions. Ooh, did you get in? Congratulations, I am pleased to inform you of your admission to the creative writing track of the Reed College Summer Program for Young Scholars for its 1995 session. We believe you have much to contribute to the Reed College community. Based on your portfolio and academic record, I am pleased to offer you financial aid to cover 75% of the summer program's tuition and fees. Wow, that's awesome. She made it. I'm so stupid sometimes. Uh-oh. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing, and I was all making plans like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. I was like, ship out? To where? She said, to basic training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? 
I guess she's been planning to join the army right after high school since she was like 12. And I guess she's really going to do it. So I was like, after graduation, I'm just never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. Hmm. Sorry to hear that. His face got burned away. But he's Richard Greenbrier, Professor Laureate of English, University of Oregon, 1956. It still works! Why is it down here in the junk pile? Look, there's a mattress and everything. Stuff. Ha! Look what I found. Mate, M Masson's Pharmacy Soda Fountain welcomes Boone County youngsters. There's Terry Greenbrier, age eight. The first sweet served up to the crowd was a chocolate sundae to Terry Greenbrier, age eight. Interesting, nephew of Mr. Masson. Oscar Masson. Okay, so this is Oscar. Interesting. And he's the uncle of Terry. Hmm. Thanks for that background. I almost didn't notice that. One of Dad's books with something stuck to it? Dear Terrence, thank you for sending along a copy of your newly published book. An author's first published manuscript is a momentous occasion. I read it this afternoon. I certainly recognized my son in the subject matter. An author's work is the externalization of that which he holds dear and that which he fears. And in this respect, I believe your work was successful. But the lens through which the personal, per, personal, personal, but the lens through which the personal shone was needlessly clouded by genre cliches and implausible dime store science fictional day ex machina. The great authors speak of their life's milieu in clear and honest tones, the lens crystal that reflects their thoughts without distortion. I congratulate you on surviving the great ordeal that is publication, and rest assured that readers of your chosen genre will lap up copies hungrily. But I urge you to shed artifice. You can do better. With a father's love and encouragement, Richard Greenbrier. You're a dick. <laughs> Richard, he's a dick. Oh, God. I gotta crack myself up. What is this? Mom's citizenship. What, what, what? What, what? Citizenship? She's originally from Canada? Well, who knew? 20th of July, 1972. When was this? No, it doesn't have a date. <laughs> okay. How, is, how, how are we doing here? Wow. Holy crap. The junk room, huh? Oh, I thought that was a figure. <laughs> but this this isn't a scary game, so I need to... Whoa, what was that? This game randomly lags. Hi. Masson's Pharmacy. I don't know, is it is it Mason or Masson? I haven't seen it. It's not M-A-S-I-O-N, uh, so I haven't been pronouncing it as Mason. Hey, Sam, I'm writing to you from Multnomah Falls. I'm here on a stupid class trip, which is stupid because it's March, and I don't know if anyone running this school has been to Oregon, but it's cold and rainy as shit in March. Wish you were here. Oh wait, you are here because I'm writing this to you in the gift shop. Oh shit, here you come. <laughs> it's funny. They tell you to stick with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. Okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. Mom and Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. The kids at school, though, 
I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. Hmm. Okay. So I'm guessing Terry did this. I don't think he liked his father very much. Let's read some of your works, oh master author. Joyce, a complete understanding. Richard Greenbrier, PhD. University of Oregon Press, give me a freaking break. You're a schmuck, you know that? Dick. All right. 14K gold heart. Hmm, customizable with up to 10 letters. Oh, she did a sketch of that earlier. She did, that's what it was. It had L and S on it. Yeah, there it is, right there. Huh. So, she was planning on giving her a thingy. A trinket. All right. Hi. Wow, seriously? What the fuck? Servant's quarters? That's for the front door. There's none for the library, though. Huh. Well, what's this? X-ray specs. This is all shit music. Girl Scout. Self. Alright. No, no, no! God forbid. Okay, what's this? There's a thing. Yolanda DeSoto. Miss Samantha Greenbrier. USA! Roar, roar! Dear Sam. Oh, okay, her full name is Yolanda. Lonnie. Got it. Today's Spanish lesson. Fly, mosca, mudcap, tapa tapacudos, sunbeam, rayo del sol, your love, tu amor. I am so happy you like the drawing. I was thinking of us when I drew it. I knew you'd be able to tell. You'd love Mexico, I think, probably. The nature here is totally different than back home. I keep thinking about Allegra and the first mate lost on a mysterious island where even the plants are out to get them. And then I think of them together, out there in the wilderness together. You already said together. And I start thinking of you again. I lie here in bed and I can almost feel you. I've been trying to save it up for when we're together again. I haven't done a good job, okay? But I tried. Okay, enough about that. Your last letter got to me the day before we start driving back north. We'll be racing this letter home. If I get home first, we can read it together. And yes, I'm taking tons of photos. We'll have to spend so much time in the dark room. Oh no. Oh god. There's a, there's a pillow. Who was sleeping down here? <laughs> Did you have anything better to do? Is there a thing in the... There are crumpled up papers. Don't you want to see what they say? Okay. There's a thing here. Girl Scout set list. Role model. Authority. Main squeeze. Telling stories. Instruction. First mate. Hmm. Self. Girl Scouts. Denial. Girl Scout. For the band formerly known as Cub Scout. I see. Todd's band lost their singer. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit, and he was complaining about needing a new singer. So Lonnie was like, I can sing. And they were all kind of like, you can? And she was like, probably. But she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now, and I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today. And she's actually really amazing. I feel so proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. So everybody knows it's like a temporary situation till she ships out in June. But till then, I'm gonna be at every single show. 
Yeah, you really can't sing, Lonnie. Hate to break it to you. Hope I'm not crashing your dreams or anything. Wow, okay. Let's compare. Damn it. I haven't even gotten to this side of the thing yet. So, there's apparently a dining room. This is where the kitchen is. The greenhouse, laundry room, washroom, pantry. Holy crap, there's quite a bit to explore. What the hell? Why am I supposed to know this combination? Who would know that combination? And also, there's... Okay. Good God. Oh, it doesn't work. What is this? Okay, I was about to say, don't lock on me. What? Is there anything in here? Or is this just a firewood closet? Okay, well, I'm fine with that, I guess. All right, um... Looks like we got this one one last uh, area right here. Which looks like it's actually normally covered up by this bookcase. So, I guess you could say this is secret. I uncovered a secret. Holy crap. Does this really go to upstairs? Because... Where am I? Oh, I'm coming out over here. Bratmobile! Hmm. Look at the scraps. Okay, sorry, we gotta read this in order. That's a lie to mom and dad situation, but it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome, and everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. The Psycho House Girl. The coolest stuff about being the Psycho House Girl. Cool thing number one. Everybody in the hall th thinking you don't know they're looking at you and whispering as you walk past because I guess they haven't heard a peripheral. Okay. Costumes. Skeletons and devils, cheerleaders from the smells like Teen Spirit video. One girl dressed as Jackie Kennedy. Okay. Those weren't in a particular order. That's fine. Don't make me listen to any, more, any of your more... <laughs> Uh, don't listen to- Ah! Fuck it! Why can't I talk? Don't make me listen to any more of your music. What? Where does this go? To guest room? What? The fuck? Wow. That's really weird. Aha! Uh -huh. 1963. Uh oh, look what I found. It's a safe combination. 1963, 1963, 1963. It's over here. I know where it is. Here. Excuse me. I've got a safe to unlock. Hi, I'm going to hack into you. One, nine, six, three. Oh, look what I did. There's some bottles here. Oil of clove. What is this? Hydrogen peroxide. It's Aquatil, Aquatil. Hmm, relief of occasional constipation. Okay, so this is stuff. Mary Greenbrier. Huh. Return to sender. So he was trying to send it to Mary, but she doesn't live there anymore? Oh god, this is gonna be hard for me to read. Dear sister, I write what shall be my last appeal to, to go unanswered one way or the other. I feel a prisoner, as on an island, with no jailer, no human soul for commune, only my one mind examining itself endlessly, endlessly searching for relief. In the years since transgression, I have sought no absolution, only, only 
bear forgiveness. In good faith, I have removed myself from all temptation, sacrificed to prove my commitment, however I can imagine. Since mother is passing, oh, since mother's passing, I have yearned for nothing more than the acknowledgement of my own kin, to be treated as human again, to breathe the air of human spirit once more. By grace, even a wretch like me could be saved, but I do not expect it. If no response is received, I shall henceforth accept my sentence, and one day simply cease to be. With a brother's love always, Oscar. Alright, so he was an estranged uncle, basically. In the years since transgression. Hmm. I wonder what he did, or did I read that and I just didn't pay attention? <laughs> His mother's passing. Now he just says that he wants to. Uh, he expect he he wants forgiveness, but he doesn't expect it. He's sorry for doing all that stuff. What's this stuff? Morphine tartrate. Okay, I I'm terrible at this. Maybe habit forming. Well, yeah, because it's morphine. Eh. It's a syringe. You miss all the shots you'd never take. That's a Wayne Gretzky quote. Seemed appropriate. Okay. So. Poor Oscar. That's probably why he's haunting the house. Because he, he died in a uh, state of misery and estrangement from his family. And he just wants to come back. Oh, that's what he meant by go back. Huh. Okay, so this goes back up to the guest room, so that's where we just were. So we need to explore this way. This one's for you, Grossman. Captain A. Okay, that's stupid. <laughs> oh, the upside down cross, not good. Had enough? The great something. Heavens to Betsy. Bratmobile. Okay. Kicking against... What was that? So this is another secret room, basically. Sonic Youth. The Amps. Bikini Kill. Sonic Youth. Wow. Wow. Of course it's empty. Samantha Greenbrier. Dear Miss Greenbrier, I appreciate the time and effort you put into writing your letter. It showed initiative and was well written, but it does not change my mind on this matter. While I understand that Mrs. Soto is a friend of yours, the fact of the matter is that she defaced school property with profanity. The fact that she allegedly defaced her own locker in retaliation for another student doing the same to yours is immaterial. As to your complaint that no other student has been punished for their part in this incident, the fact is that no guilty party has come forward and there has been no convincing evidence as to who might have defaced your locker. In other words, there is no one to punish. I was just letting this issue drop, as it will only bring more unwanted attention to yourself, which I believe is what you claim began this whole incident in the first place. Great, so now she's being bullied. I don't get Lonnie sometimes. Like, her band, and our zine, and her hair, and everything are all anti-authority. I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation, following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to lie about who she is? She said they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like, it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to, like, defend my honor. I've learned when to stop arguing, though. I don't think Lonnie even gets Lonnie sometimes. Let me read this so-called zine that you publish. This one's for you, Grossman. She's tougher than a wild Mustang. No female is gonna tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Ready to join the revolution and take a stand against Grossman and the patriarchy? Interesting. Maybe you just want more cool 
tunes, oh, cold zines, or maybe even mixtapes. Send us your missives from the girl riot underground. She even got a P.O. box, wow. So this is Grossman, right? Principal Grossman? Yeah, he's a douchebag, all right. Hi. Am I actually in the, yeah, finally, wow. Where are you? Where is she? En Espanol! Aw, oh, she's learning uh, Spanish. Order, oh, offer of promotion. Dear Head Conservationist Greenbrier, Due to your exemplary management of the Flintlock prescribed burn operation last year- Man, everyone is obsessed with that controlled burn, seriously. Blah blah blah, we'd like to offer you the position of Regional Conservation Management Director, responsible for operations throughout Northwestern Oregon. Your assistance would be sought to fill your previous position on site at the Flintlock National Forest. Your new posting would be at the Regional Management Building, located at 128 Bullhorn Road. Which should be much more convenient for your daily commute. Please respond as soon as possible, blah 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 blah. Bruce Pendleton. So that's February 8th, 1995. They did a great job, this family, locating their uh, notes in chronological order throughout the, uh... What is this? Hi. National tickets. To what? Earth, Wind, and Fire. Huh. 101.9 Kink FM? Okay. Alright. Kink FM. I don't know about that name. Froth. Tincture. How do you pronounce that? P poo keepsy? Pow keepsies. Teenagers of the Year. Interesting. Okay. Hey Lonnie, sorry my mom was such a bitch last night. She's hardly ever around since her forest is like an hour away, and then when she is home, she takes it out on you, like because you're not a member of the family, she knows you won't call her out on it, so I'm sorry. Haha, <laughs> it's okay, I know she's just jealous of our cool and freewheeling lifestyles. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. I'm lucky my mom lives in Florida. You have to, you have, to have a mom every day. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring up the mom thing like that. I know, I shouldn't complain. No, I'm being serious. My mom isn't a psycho Christian, and her new husband, Don, is a complete tool. Living in Florida with him is her eternal punishment in my mind. So you wouldn't rather live with your mom in Florida? No. Oh, holy crap. She really doesn't want to live with her mom. Hmm. Well then, sorry Lonnie. What? Why don't you calm down a little bit? Why is this all purple? Guardian angels up above, bless this house with lots of love. I did it, 